Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about the hydrolysis of nitriles, which is a wonderful reaction that can happen in both acidic and basic conditions. In acidic conditions we are typically going to form the carboxylic acid, and of course we are going to have some of our ammonium ion over here as the co-product, but we don't really care much about that. In basic conditions, however, the picture is a little bit more interesting. If we do this reaction in milder conditions and our heat is manageable, then typically we are going to make an amide. However, if we are persistent and we are using more vigorous conditions uh, with more vigorous reflux and higher temperature, we can hydrolyze it all the way to the corresponding carboxylate, and since we are working in basic conditions, that carboxylate is going to be a negatively charged species, however, we can neutralize that due to the acidic workup and convert it into the carboxylic acid as well. So it doesn't matter which conditions you use for the hydrolysis of your nitrile, you are going to end up with the carboxylic acid if you are persistent enough, or you could potentially stop at the formation of the amide if you are doing this reaction in uh, basic conditions. Catching the amide in acidic conditions is very difficult, so in acid we are pretty much never going to be catching that amide and having that as a product, just as an intermediate. And talking of intermediates, this mechanism is notoriously long and a little bit hard, so instructors absolutely love to bring it on the exam and give it to you for one of the mechanism questions. So let's look at both nitrile hydrolysis mechanisms in acidic and basic conditions. And I want to start with the acidic conditions first, as that one is a little bit easier. I am going to start with the nitrile of benzoic acid, and to make it a little bit easier for me to draw it over and over again, I am going to abbreviate my phenyl ring that I have over here as pH. So as we are working in acidic conditions, the first step in this reaction is going to be a proton transfer in which we are going to be protonating our nitrile. This is not a particularly favorable proton transfer step, however nitriles as is, they are very unreactive towards any kind of nucleophiles, and especially when we have a poor nucleophile like water, we really need to make sure that our nitrile is more reactive, and in order to make it more electrophilic, we are going to be protonating it. So now, when our nitrile is protonated and is a little bit more electrophilic than it used to be before, we can do the nucleophilic attack from our water, so I'm going to show oxygen from water attacking the carbon and electrons from the carbon-nitrogen triple bond going to go onto our nitrogen. This gives me the following intermediate, and once we have that one, we need to promptly deprotonate the oxygen by removing the proton from here, and I'm going to put another proton on my nitrogen to continue with the chain of this hydrolysis. So to deprotonate my OH, I'm going to bring another equivalent of water, H2O, and I'm going to have that equivalent come in and pull my proton off just like so. To preserve some space, I'm going to combine two steps in one, and I'm going to bring my acid around, and I'm going to protonate my nitrogen as well, however those are two different proton transfer steps, typically we are going to show that the bottom one, where we are deprotonating our oxygen, that one is going to be our first step, and then, once we have a neutral intermediate, we are going to protonate that nitrogen to make the molecule that I'm about to draw here. This positively charged protonated intermediate is stabilized by the resonance, so I can show this form, or I can move electrons around like so, and draw the other resonance contributor that looks like this. Now, it starts to look a little bit like our amide, so there are a couple of things that we can get here. One thing would be to pull this proton off, and if I do so, I'm going to make an amide. So I'm going to draw that product over here in pink, and as I've mentioned a moment ago, isolating an amide in acidic conditions is quite difficult, so typically we're not going to see that as the final product here, and our hydro 
hydrolysis is going to continue. So instead of doing the acid-base chemistry, what we are actually going to see happening here is that water going to attack, giving us a tetrahedral intermediate looking like this. Now, again, like in one of our previous steps, we'll have to get rid of the proton from our oxygen and put that extra proton on the nitrogen to convert that into a living group. And like in the previous case, I'm going to combine two mechanistic steps in one, where I have my water coming in and deprotonating my oxygen, and the second step where I bring my acid and I protonate that nitrogen with an acid, which now gives me a slightly different version of my tetrahedral intermediate, where the nitrogen part, this part over here, is now a good living group, so that part can dissociate like so, giving me a protonated carboxylic acid plus this ammonia over here, which will immediately come in and deprotonate my carboxylic acid, giving me my actual final product, which is of course my carboxylic acid, and an ammonium cation, which we no longer care about. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to point out about this mechanism. First of all, I want to talk about these proton transfers, where I'm using my chaperon, where I'm using water to pull the proton off, and then to reprotonate protonate another part of my molecule. It might be incredibly tempting to just do it something like that, but please do not do that. That step is physically impossible, and we have a lot of computational and research data that suggests that forming this uh, four member transition state, which would, would be required to get this type of intramolecular proton transfer, is just unreasonable. This is a common shortcut, so if your instructor is doing something like that, that is fine for the purposes of your class, but just keep in mind that that is not going to be fine for the purposes of something like an MCAT exam or ACS exam or any other exams outside of your classroom. And another thing that I want to mention here is that, as I said a moment ago, this step where we are using our water to deprotonate our intermediate and give us an amide product over here also seems very tempting, however we know that in reality catching that amide is very difficult, so typically we are not going to see amide as the final product, so instead of deprotonating your intermediate, keep going with the nucleophilic attack instead. And instead of going towards your amide, keep on doing your hydrolysis until you reach the carboxylic acid. And remember, each step on this reaction is an equilibrium, so if you need to go back and retrace your steps, you can definitely do so. The driving force here is the formation of the carboxylic acid and ammonium ion over here. That step has a ridiculously high equilibrium constant, so once we are past this point in our reaction, there is no going back. However, up to this point, every step is an equilibrium, and most of these steps are actually quite unfavorable, but once we form our carboxylic acid, there is no going back. Now, as I've mentioned at the beginning, this mechanism is also possible in basic conditions. So, as an example of the basic mechanism, I'm going to use the same starting material so you can see the difference between those two mechanisms. And because the reaction is done in basic conditions, the first step here is going to be the direct nucleophilic attack from our OH onto our nitrile, like so, and while nitrile is still very unreactive towards nucleophiles, OH- is a much better nucleophile than water, so this reaction, this step in the reaction becomes more feasible. As a result, we are going to get an intermediate with a negative charge on the nitrogen. Not a particularly stable intermediate by a long stretch. So we are immediately going to protonate it with the proton from water, and since we are working in aqueous conditions, we have plenty of water floating around for all of our purposes. This is going to give us this imine looking structure, but just like in the previous case, we are not done, we are far from done in this case. So we are going to take another equivalent of our base, our OH-, which going to come in and pull the proton off our molecule again, making another negatively charged intermediate, but this guy is a little bit better than the previous one, because now this negative charge is stabilized by the resonance, so we can draw this contributor, or the other contributor with 
with a minus on the nitrogen. And of course, as any negatively charged species goes, these guys are not particularly stable. And since we are working in uh, aqueous conditions, we are going to have another equivalent of water donate its proton to our molecule, giving us an amide. And since this amide kind of looks a little bit upside down from the uh, form how we are usually drawing our amides, I'm going to twist the amide functional group in space a little bit so it looks a little bit more familiar to what we are used to seeing. And as I mentioned earlier, we can isolate this amide if we are doing the reaction in mild conditions. What exactly is mild conditions? Well, that actually kind of depends on the molecule itself. Typically, by mild condition for the uh, hydrolysis of uh, our nitriles and basic media, we would mean a temperature under 100 degrees and uh, just warm solution without vigorous reflux. However, if we take this reaction through a vigorous reflux, then we can continue hydrolyzing our amide just like what we did in acidic conditions, but now we are going to start with the nucleophilic attack from our base again. So I'm going to bring another equivalent of my OH- and attack this carbon, moving electrons up, giving us the following tetrahedral intermediate. From this point, as with most tetrahedral intermediates, we are going to have our leaving group dissociation. We can either kick our OH out or we can kick the NH2 out. And if we kick the NH2 out, we are going to end up with the carboxylic acid and NH2 minus, which is also called amide. So yeah, we call this functional group the carboxylic acid derivative an amide, and we also refer to NH2 minus as an amide. So it can be a little bit confusing when we are talking about that. That's why you always want to point out whether you're talking about NH2 minus or if you're talking about carboxylic acid derivative. Otherwise, it can be a little bit confusing what exactly you're referring to. Anyways, as soon as we form our amide, the important thing here to notice is that amide is incredibly basic and we have just formed a very powerful base in the presence of the acid. So what's going to happen here is that this amide will immediately snatch the proton off our carboxylic acid, kind of similar to what we had in our acidic mechanism, giving us the carboxylate and ammonium. And that would be the end of this reaction until we do the acidic workup. If we want to get our carboxylic acid, we need to take this guy that we have just formed and we need to neutralize that. So to do that, I'm going to bring acid, which is already a different step. So I'm going to specify that this is a workup, so you don't think that I'm using base and an acid in the same conditions. So H3O plus from our acidic workup is going to provide the proton to our carboxylate like so, giving us the carboxylic acid as our final product. And I am even highlighting that this proton over here did not come from the original reaction, it came from the acidic workup. So as you can see, the hydrolysis of nitriles is not a very difficult mechanism. In a nutshell, it's just a combination of the proton transfer steps and acyl substitution reactions. And of course, if you want to learn more about acyl substitution reactions, you should watch this video next.